sont prises pour rendre notre séjour agréable. Je félicite Monsieur le Président pour la confiance qui vous est investie. It is now my pleasure to welcome His Excellency President of Armenia. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Her Majesty and Her Majesty's Government for organizing this significant and timely event. Special thanks to Prime Minister Boris Johnson, his colleagues, and the City of Glasgow for excellent summit and warm hospitality. First, about Armenia, a small state and a global nation. According to the World Bank analysis, Armenia is the fourth most vulnerable country to climate change in Eastern Europe and Central Asia region. Armenia has registered a 1.3 degree Celsius increase in temperature and 9% decrease in precipitation. Despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, an ongoing Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, we are committed to stronger integration into the global agenda on climate change and to demonstrate an increase in our climate ambition. Armenia has constantly expressed its commitment to joining global efforts to combat climate change. In, 1920, in 2021, Armenia reaffirmed our commitment to the NDC and declared an objective 40% reduction of its greenhouse gas emission by 2030 compared to the 1990. The long objective of Armenia is to achieve climate neutrality in the second half of the century. Transition to climate neutrality is a core of the country's energy independence, energy security, and green growth policy. Our vision of resilient and low carbon growth is directly connected to a solid and effective adaptation strategy that is based on an ecosystem approach, reforestation, investments in renewable energy and energy efficiency, new high technologies, promotion of electric mobility, and further development of nuclear energy. Dear colleagues, substantial public debt burdens most developing economies in the, and their ability to uh, access concessional and non-concessional climate finance. In this regard, a creative approach is crucial. I am delighted to share with you our renewed Debt for Climate Swap initiative. It presents a new climate finance investment in instrument, and it will help developing countries to adapt more efficiently to climate change finance and will provide new economic opportunities. Mr. President, exactly one year ago, during its war against Nagorno-Karabakh, Azerbaijan used internationally banned weapons to target not only civilians but also beautiful forests of the large area, causing massive forest fires and creating environmental disasters in place. We call all international community to step up to its efforts to prevent such irresponsible inhuman behavior. The environmental challenges do not recognize borders and conflict lines, and we should bring all states of the world into comprehensive cooperation. Now, just a couple of words about this conference. I thoroughly enjoy, enjoyed the opening of the conference, enjoyed speeches of my colleagues from worldwide, and it was confirmed by everybody here that there is a big problem, which is the climate change. But that's not the only problem that we have these days, because we're facing also pandemic, we are facing economic difficulties, and we are worldwide, and we are facing rise of uh, populism, we are facing uncertainty, we are also facing unpredictability here. But on the other side, having all of these problems, we have also recognized here globally that there is huge, there's huge wealth, and that wealth is in trillions of dollars that could resolve the issue. And on the other side, during the 100 years of development based on quantum technology and quantum physics, we have achieved phenomenal achievements in science and technology. And that technology today can resolve our problems, be that in climate change, be that in, in COVID and other problems that we are facing. So where is the problem? Why we are not so 
effective or efficient. I think there is one thing that we should learn from the history of science. 100 years ago, great scientists, people like Albert Einstein, Max Planck, Heisenberg, realized that the classical laws of physics and mechanics, they don't, cannot be applied to the new discovered small particles and atom, you have to change your mentality. You have to change your, your philosophy, your logic, even your common sense to understand and create the theory of quantum physics. We are on the crossroad. The world has become quantum. This is a crossroad that we have to start thinking differently because the world that ahead of us is not the one that was there 10 or 20 years ago. So based on that, if we change our mentality, form our ambition and strategy, then we can effectively use the finances and the wealth uh, created during this phenomenal development and use the technology to handle the problems that we are facing, but not only resolve the problems, but also create a basis of development to the brighter future years to come. And with finally, at the opening of summit, Professor Brian Cox took us to a trip to Cosmos to see from the above how amazingly beautiful this planet is and to realize that in the whole universe, this is our home and the only one. And there is no other alternative for us but to work and to fight for this green and blue planet. Armenia is committed to become a really smart state devoted to our nature, planet, and humanity. And I am optimistic that we can overcome these difficulties and build a brighter future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Your Excellency.